Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. My name is Jamil Sayed, otherwise known as the Mu'edhin or the 50 Mosque Man. So earlier this year, I had an opportunity to embark on this amazing trip across the United States. I became the first person in world history to have made the Adhan, which is the Islamic call to prayer, across all 50 states within a record span of 35 days. Uh, a lot of people know me in that capacity, but what a lot of people don't know is that along with reciting the call to prayer, I also had the opportunity to recite the last sermon of the Prophet Muhammad, may peace and blessings be upon him. And I did that in all the different venues which I visited along the trip. Two other big things that I did you know, as a requirement for this project was to be able to interview one person from the leadership that talked about the history of the Muslims in that area and also what type of contributions they're making to society at large. And you might be wondering, well, we understand the two, first two things, you know, the Adhan and the Khutbat al wida which is again the last sermon, but why the third one? We don't have a say in authoring our own narrative. And we wanted to, uh, I wanted to go ahead and be able to show and demonstrate not only to myself, but to my family and to my community that there are things that you can do in order to basically be the author of your own narrative. And so we asked these communities, again, to talk about what type of good works that they're doing. See, Muslims have been here for a very long time. Now, we've been here before Columbus. We predate Columbus. We were in the first stage, second stage, the enslaved Africans, the third stage, the civil rights movements, and more recently, the immigrants. And 7.6 billion people in the world, out of which 1.8 billion approximately are Muslims. That's 23% of the world's population approximately. And we're actually everywhere. You know, we're in the healthcare society, we're in the education field, we're your taxi drivers, entrepreneurs, your neighbors. You know, and most people have very, very good interactions with one another. But unfortunately, you don't see that in the press. You don't see that in the media. So this was the thought behind going out there and and helping people to tell their own story, positive story, you know, interactions that they have. Now, along the way of this 35-day trip, I had an opportunity to meet all sorts of different types of people from different backgrounds. I had an opportunity to uh, visit and see wonderful architectural examples. And sometimes these mosques, these are the places that I visited, all 50 venues were mosques. Sometimes there were very, very elaborate facilities, multi-million dollar facilities that people put a lot of thought and efforts into. And other times there were literally holes in the wall. Sometimes the communities were comprised, you know, with saturated ethnicities, you know, Somalis, you know, all over the place, Somali Americans. And other times very, very diverse. You would find all sorts of different ethnicities like Boise, Idaho, or Portland, Oregon. You know, this is the reality of the matter. The Muslims are a big part of the society. And so as I maneuvered from one place to the other, and we tasted different types of cuisine, and as we crossed the county border, and we were able to witness the wonderful architecture that was there, I began to think of myself, of what a wonderful country that we live in, that allows us freedom of religion and freedom of speech. And that was, I think, extremely beneficial, you know, for me to be able to witness personally myself being born and raised in Ann Arbor, Michigan, being a proud Michigan Wolverine, being a Disney fanatic, you know, all of these things comprise my personality. I was born to immigrants. There's a little bit of that inside of me as well from Pakistan. You know, I live in Auburn Hills now. So not only am I from Ann Arbor, not only do I have a little bit of Pakistani culture, but I've got a little bit and a lot, I would say, more of American culture. And I was able to see that across the board. Now, this trip meant many different things to many different types of people, like, for instance, we have Imam Majid, a very, very well-known Muslim leader and Imam of a place called the Adams Center in Virginia. Has a direct link with the White House. And when I was in his mosque and I made the call to prayer, in his sermon when he was delivering it, he looked right at me in the middle of maybe 2,000 people and he said, 50 states, 50 adhans, 50 communities. Freedom of religion, freedom of speech. And so that's what this journey meant to him. As I went to Newtown, Connecticut, the place where the atrocious act of the innocent lives of the young children was uh, taken, I had an opportunity to talk to the president, who was a female, 
you know, of the masjid. And she said to me, you're like a modern day Ibn Battuta, right? You're going ahead and you are collecting all of these stories and happenings and sharing this with all of the children. You're like a role model to our youth. So to her, she was able to relate this way with the journey. And then we had an opportunity to meet an elder of the community who said that he was the per first person to take and dig a dirt of, uh, or a shovel of dirt uh, from the earth and be the person who was the pioneer of that community. He said that I have seen many people come through this community and I've seen the young children grow into responsible adults and have families of their own. Now they're running this particular mosque and I have never been able to actually take my time and go to other masajids and other communities to see how they live. He said, you've opened up 50 windows into 50 different communities so that we may recognize one another, so that we can learn the best practices of how they're running their institutions so we can go ahead and adopt. So you have all of these different types of perspectives on this journey which took place for me. But if you're going to ask me, a father, a husband, a son, why I did this, well, I've got a 13-year-old boy, and he goes to school. And they discuss current events on CNN. And I want that boy to feel proud in the fact that he's Muslim American. I want him to not shrink into the shadows when they talk about what's happening overseas or what's happening here. See, Islam is not what a lot of people call it. And that's the core focus of my mission. It's to not talk about our values, but rather to show it. The, the last sermon of the Prophet, peace be upon him, talks about gender equity, social justice, a call to peace, a call to brotherhood, fairness and commerce. And this was done 1,400 years ago. So when I recited this sermon in 50 different communities to thousands of people across America, I reminded them of who they actually are and what they're supposed to do here. And that, that message needs to be shared. We're not supposed to talk about our values. We're supposed to show our values. And we do that through coming out of our cocoons, whether you're Muslim or non-Muslim. That's what was done on this trip. In airports and hotels and in taxis, I had an opportunity to meet so many people from other faiths. And when I shared with them what I was doing, they didn't run away. They didn't show apprehension. They wanted to further the dialogue. They wanted to take a picture with me. They wanted to follow on Facebook. They wanted to be a part of it. They wanted to collaborate and build bridges, right? That's what this was. For me, I tell you, all of these wonderful perspectives that people had on this trip, for me, I wanted to do that one thing, that one thing that would capture the attention of the heavens. That one thing that would hopefully make a case for me when I have to face my creator that I've done something that would please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that I want and to be worthy of the companionship of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And I wanted my children to identify with that. I wanted the children across the board to know that they can also set world records. They can find a cure to cancer. They can do anything that they set their minds to, but their intentions have to be the right way. So don't want to put a case study out there where we talk about what we do. We want to tell everybody what we did based upon something that we actually went out there and put into action. Thoughts in the leadership. Please follow me on Instagram, on Facebook, hashtag 50 Mosque Man. And please don't forget, make sure that you have a positive experience with somebody else. That's the only way to build a bridge. That's the only way to live. Thank you.